Have you ever thought about what life would be like if you turned on your tap one morning and no water came out? No water to cook, no water to clean, no water to drink. For many countries, this is not just a nightmare, it is reality. But one small nation, Singapore, has managed to pull off what many thought was impossible, solving its water crisis. How did a tiny island with no natural water resources turn itself into a global model of water security? Let's take a journey into this story, because it's not just about water, it's about survival, creativity, and determination. Chapter 1. Singapore's Harsh Beginning When Singapore became independent in 1965, it entered the world stage with almost nothing in hand. This small island had no natural resources, no oil reserves to sell, no wide farmland to grow crops, and no great rivers or lakes to rely on for fresh water. To make matters worse, its only dependable supply came through agreements with neighboring Malaysia. That meant Singapore's lifeline was not in its own hands. For a young nation just starting to build its identity, this was a dangerous weakness. The reality of living under such conditions was harsh. Imagine standing in line with your family, waiting for water during rationing hours. Buckets and basins became a normal sight in homes, as everyone tried to store as much as possible. Children grew up hearing their parents warn them not to waste a single drop. The fear wasn't abstract, it was real. Any political tension with Malaysia could turn into a water crisis overnight. For the leaders of Singapore, this was more than an inconvenience, it was a survival issue. How could a new country stand tall and independent if its most basic resource could be cut off at any moment? Prime Minister Lee Kuan Yew and his team understood that without water security, economic development, foreign investment, and even the trust of their own people would collapse. That urgency set the stage for Singapore's determination to control its destiny. Water was not just about thirst, it was about freedom. Chapter two, leadership with a vision. When a nation is young, its leaders shape not just policies, but the very direction of survival. For Singapore, that leader was Lee Kuan Yew, its founding prime minister. Unlike many who might see water as simply a utility, something to manage when there's a problem, Lee saw it as the foundation upon which the entire country's future would rest. To him, water was not a side issue. It was life itself. And without it, Singapore would always remain vulnerable. He made it clear, every other policy must bend at the knees for our water survival. This wasn't rhetoric. It became a guiding principle. While other governments often treated water shortages as emergencies to be patched up, Singapore took the opposite approach. It made water a national priority, weaving it into every layer of policy and planning. Under Lee's leadership, resources were directed into areas that, at the time, might have seemed bold or even risky. Funding for scientific research, development of cutting-edge technologies, and education campaigns to teach every Singaporean the value of conservation. The idea wasn't just to plug today's holes, but to secure tomorrow's future. This vision meant Singapore would not wait until taps ran dry to act. Instead, the nation aimed for self-reliance, no longer willing to beg for water again. It was a mindset shift from dependence to independence, from crisis management to forward planning. This kind of leadership turned what seemed like a weakness into a rallying point for national strength. Chapter three, the four national taps a clever strategy. Singapore's leaders knew that survival meant building a system that could never be broken by a single failure. Their answer was the now famous Four National Taps, a framework that acts like four solid pillars holding up the nation's water security. Each tap is different, but together they form a safety net that makes Singapore one of the most water-resilient countries in the world. The first tap is imported water from Malaysia. Though still important, it's treated as a short-term support, not something Singapore relies on blindly. The second tap is local catchment water, where almost every corner of the island is designed to collect rainfall. From drains to canals to reservoirs, the city itself became a giant water harvesting machine. Then comes the third tap, new water, Singapore's breakthrough in recycling. Used water is cleaned with advanced membranes and ultraviolet light until it becomes ultra pure. It's so safe and reliable that even the electronics industry, which demands water cleaner than what humans drink, trusts it. 
Finally, the fourth tap is desalinated water, turning endless seawater into fresh drinking water. With advanced desalination plants, Singapore can literally drink from the ocean. The brilliance of this system lies in diversification. If drought reduces rainfall, desalination and new water step up. If imported water faces political risks, local solutions fill the gap. No single source can break the chain. It's a masterclass in resilience, turning scarcity into security and dependence into independence. Chapter four, turning rain into treasure. In many parts of the world, rain is seen as an inconvenience, something that delays plans, causes traffic, or ruins a sunny day. But in Singapore, rain is nothing less than liquid gold. With no rivers or natural lakes to rely on, the government decided that every drop falling from the sky must be captured, stored, and reused. To achieve this, Singapore transformed its entire island into one giant water catchment system. Massive networks of drains, canals, and reservoirs were built, carefully designed to guide rainwater from rooftops, streets, and parks into storage areas, instead of letting it wash uselessly into the sea. Today, an incredible two-thirds of Singapore's land is used for rainwater collection, an achievement unmatched by most cities in the world. One of the most impressive examples is the Marina Barrage, a modern engineering marvel right in the heart of the city. What looks like a scenic waterfront with the skyline as a backdrop is actually a huge freshwater reservoir providing water supply, flood control, and even recreation. Imagine that, a world-class tourist spot doubling as a national survival tool. The smart use of urban space means Singapore can collect and treat vast amounts of rainwater for everyday use. Instead of complaining about heavy showers, Singaporeans see them as blessings filling up their reservoirs. By treating rain as a treasure rather than a nuisance, Singapore has turned nature's unpredictability into a steady lifeline. Chapter five, the miracle of new water. If there's one breakthrough that truly changed Singapore's water story, it is new water. In the 1990s, when the idea of recycling wastewater was first introduced, many people cringed. The thought of drinking water that once came from toilets, sinks, or showers sounded unthinkable. But Singapore chose science over stigma. The government invested heavily in cutting-edge filtration and purification systems. Used water was sent through microfiltration membranes, reverse osmosis, and finally ultraviolet disinfection, ensuring that every drop was cleaner than regular tap water. To win public trust, officials didn't hide the process. Instead, they launched new water visitor centers where families could see the treatment steps for themselves and even taste the final product. By being transparent, they turned skepticism into acceptance. The results were extraordinary. Today, new water meets up to 40% of Singapore's total demand, and that share is expected to grow. What started as yuck water is now so clean that even the high-tech semiconductor industry, which requires ultra-pure water for making microchips, chooses new water over traditional supplies. For Singaporeans, knee water has become more than just water. It is a symbol of national resilience. It proved that with the right technology and trust, even waste can be transformed into a resource. What once was flushed away now fuels factories, quenches thirst, and secures the island's future. This miracle of recycling turns Singapore into a global pioneer, showing the world that nothing is wasted when innovation meets determination. Chapter six, desalination, drinking from the sea. For centuries, humans looked at the ocean and saw an endless supply of water, yet one problem stood in the way, salt. Drinking seawater is impossible but Singapore decided to turn this challenge into an opportunity. Surrounded by the sea, the island asked a bold question, why not convert the ocean into our reservoir? The answer came through desalination, a process where salt and other impurities are removed from seawater. Early on, desalination was costly and consumed huge amounts of energy, but Singapore invested in research to make the technology more efficient. Through innovations like reverse osmosis membranes and energy recovery systems, the process became faster, cleaner, and more affordable. Today, Singapore runs multiple large-scale desalination plants capable of producing fresh drinking water directly from the sea. This supply now covers about 30% of daily national needs, and the government plans to expand it further. 
Desalination has become a reliable insurance policy, ensuring that no matter what happens, whether drought reduces rainfall or imported water agreements face tension, Singapore will always have a backup source. Together with new water, desalination forms two powerful independent taps that Singapore controls completely. No outside nation can shut them off and no weather event can fully disrupt them. That independence is priceless. By mastering the art of drinking from the sea, Singapore once again turned a limitation into an advantage. What the world once saw as unusable, Singapore transformed into security, freedom, and survival. Chapter 7. Educating the People. The Hidden Secret. While technology gave Singapore the tools to secure water, leaders understood that machines alone wouldn't solve the problem. Real change needed to start with people. If citizens wasted water, even the best desalination plant or new water system would never be enough. That's why Singapore launched one of its most important strategies, public education. From the very beginning, the message was simple and repeated everywhere, every drop counts. This wasn't just a slogan, it was a mindset campaign. Schools introduced lessons on water conservation, so children grew up valuing the resource. Parents were encouraged to pass these habits down at home. Even small actions like turning off the tap while brushing teeth or using less water when washing dishes were emphasized as acts of national responsibility. The government also made it practical. Households received free water saving kits, simple devices for taps and showers that reduced wastage without sacrificing comfort. Public campaigns featured posters, TV ads, and even community events, reminding everyone that water was a shared duty. Over time, these efforts reshaped culture. Singaporeans developed a deep respect for water, treating it as something precious, not endless. The results speak for themselves. The average Singaporean now uses less water daily compared to many residents of wealthier countries with far greater natural resources. This hidden secret, mindset, was just as important as technology. By turning conservation into a way of life, Singapore ensured its water strategy was not just top-down, but embraced by every household, every family, and every individual. Chapter 8. A City That Plans Ahead If there's one trait that defines Singapore's success, it is foresight. Unlike many countries that only react once a crisis arrives, Singapore has built its entire strategy around preparing decades in advance. The government doesn't just ask, what do we need today? It asks, what will we need 30, 40, even 50 years from now? This forward thinking is critical because Singapore faces growing threats. Climate change is expected to bring hotter temperatures, unpredictable rainfall, and longer dry spells. At the same time, rising sea levels could make fresh water more vulnerable to contamination. Instead of waiting for these problems to strike, Singapore is already putting solutions in place. New investments are being poured into bigger desalination plants, capable of meeting a larger share of the island's needs. More new water facilities are also being developed to recycle even greater volumes of used water. On top of that, Singapore is exploring underground storage systems, massive reserves that could hold water for use during prolonged droughts. This habit of looking ahead has protected the nation again and again. When other countries scramble during shortages, Singapore continues calmly, its supply secured by careful planning. It's not luck, it's discipline. By thinking generations ahead, Singapore reduces the risk of ever being caught off guard. For its people, that foresight provides not just water, but peace of mind. It's proof that long-term vision, backed by action, can turn vulnerability into lasting strength. Chapter 9. The global model Singapore's success story has not gone unnoticed. Around the world, countries struggling with water scarcity now look to this tiny island for inspiration. Nations in the Middle East, where deserts dominate, and countries in Africa, where droughts are frequent, have studied Singapore's methods closely. Even developed regions like California and the United States, often plagued by severe water shortages, send delegations to learn from Singapore's approach. This global reputation has earned Singapore the title of the Silicon Valley of water technology. Just as Silicon Valley is the hub of innovation for technology companies, Singapore has become the go-to center for breakthroughs in water solutions. From recycling to desalination to urban catchment design, the city-state has set standards others want to follow. 
What makes Singapore's approach especially admirable is its willingness to share knowledge. Instead of guarding its achievements, it openly collaborates with the world. Every two years, the nation hosts the Singapore International Water Week, a global summit where experts, policymakers, and industry leaders gather to exchange ideas, showcase new technologies, and discuss strategies to combat water stress. By doing this, Singapore transformed itself from a student into a teacher. It didn't just solve its own water problem, it turned its experience into a resource for the world. The story of Singapore shows that even the smallest nations can make the biggest impact when they lead with vision, discipline, and a spirit of collaboration. Chapter 10, What We Can Learn. Singapore's water journey is more than a story about survival. It's a guidebook filled with lessons that any country, business, or even individual can apply. At its heart, it teaches us one powerful truth. Success doesn't come from reacting to problems, but from preparing long before they arrive. The first lesson is clear. Don't wait for a crisis, plan early. Singapore didn't wait until its taps ran dry. It started planning decades ahead, ensuring future generations would be safe. That same principle applies to our lives. Planning for retirement, saving for emergencies, or preparing for challenges before they hit makes us stronger and more secure. Second, use technology boldly. Recycling wastewater or drinking from the sea once sounded impossible, even unpleasant. But Singapore embraced innovation, and today those solutions are celebrated worldwide. In our own lives, being open to new tools, ideas and methods can turn problems into opportunities. Third, educate people. The government knew success wasn't possible without citizens who valued water. Likewise, families, businesses, and communities thrive when knowledge is shared and when people work together with a shared sense of responsibility. Finally, diversify your sources. Just as Singapore created four national taps, we should avoid depending on only one solution, one income, or one path. Spreading out resources builds resilience. Singapore's story is proof that with vision, discipline, and creativity, even the smallest nation can turn scarcity into abundance. And so can we. Conclusion from vulnerability to victory. It's almost hard to believe. A tiny island nation with no rivers, no lakes, and no mountains of fresh water has become one of the most water secure places on the planet. Singapore's transformation wasn't luck and it wasn't chance. It was built on vision, discipline, and relentless innovation. Leaders saw the danger, acted early, and inspired a whole nation to turn scarcity into strength. This story is more than about water. It's about what happens when people refuse to accept limits. It's about how foresight, courage, and unity can overcome even the harshest disadvantages. In many ways, Singapore's water journey reflects the resilience of its people. The belief that no problem is too big if faced with determination and creativity. So the next time you pour a glass of water, pause for a moment. That simple act, so easy to take for granted, reminds us that water is life. Protecting it is not only one of the smartest investments a nation can make, but also one of the wisest choices for every household, every community, and every individual. If Singapore can rise from vulnerability to victory, then any country can. And maybe, just maybe, the change starts with us by appreciating every drop we hold in our hands. If this story inspired you, don't let it stop here. Like this video, share it with your friends, and subscribe for more powerful stories of resilience, innovation, and history. Together, let's spread knowledge that matters and remind the world. Every drop counts.